It is 824 now on daybreak and we are continuing through noon today right here on daybreak. But joining us live on the phone right now is Governor Kathy Hochul. She's joining us live to give us an update on how the state is helping Western New York battle this brutal snowstorm. Governor, thank you so much for joining us this morning on daybreak. Tell us what is going on and please give us an update. Well, I appreciate that. I've been here since uh, late Wednesday night. I've, I've we're operating in different places, but out of our command center in Chittawaga, just had a very thorough briefing from all the agencies and entities involved. We did have some problems overnight with respect to traffic. Uh, a number of 70 tractor, tractor trailers were stranded, as well as 10 passenger vehicles on Route 20 and Eden Evans Road. And I point this out only because it took an enormous number of resources off our roads from doing the work of plowing uh, to be able to attend to these individuals. Our state police did an incredible job reaching every single vehicle, offering them food and water and a warming station. And now we're down to about 40 trucks that are still stranded, but every single one of them violated a driving ban. And so uh, as even the weather looks like it's clearing in some parts, the south towns, the city, this is a temporary lull, and this is our window to get out there with even more trucks, more operators, and do the clearing now. So I just want everybody to be patient, even though it looks good outside. It is coming back, and this is the opportunity we need to make sure that we can clear the roads and then it gets to the secondary roads, working with our local partners. So that's what's happening now. You know, you have very thorough weather forecast. I was uh, watching uh, your team and uh, letting, and I'm from Hamburg, you know, so I've been to this. I've been through all the snow events, and this is one that we're probably approaching a, a statewide record, which is quite extraordinary, but being a governor from Buffalo definitely has its advantages because uh, I know all the resources to deploy. I know the individuals, and uh, we have uh, State Police Superintendent Steve Nigrelli from Western New York, from Buffalo as well. So we have a team that really understands uh, Western New York intensely and knows how to help people get through this, uh, this epic snow event. And it's an advantage for you, Governor Hochul, but also a bigger advantage to, for the people of Western New York because uh, of the amount of support that's come in. Uh, this is a, a two-pronged storm, though. Kevin just pointed out some of the lake total, the totals off of Lake Ontario. Um, that's got to make things a little more difficult as far as divvying up support, divvying up equipment across the state. Well, we deployed in advance, and we saw this coming. I did not want to be in a circumstance where we're asking for help once the snow starts flying. Uh, we brought in assistance from everywhere, including the National Guard we just deployed over 70 National Guard members to the South Towns as of 8 a.m. this morning. They'll be assisting. So we positioned personnel and everybody we could think of, and I just said, okay, let's add in even more reinforcements. Let's see who else we could bring in, uh, individuals and plows and operators who aren't being used elsewhere in the state. So uh, we needed to have an intense focus on West Europe, but also the Watertown area. I'll be heading up there at some point once the airport's open to monitor what's going there. But they've been hit very hard as well. But Western New York having a larger population area, many more people are affected. So we're uh, making sure that both of these parts of our states are getting all the assistance they possibly need. Governor, we know that you did act in advance and deploy in advance, but is it enough? And do you think you will need to ask for more help and deploy more crews to our area. Six feet of snow is the top end of what we thought we were going to get, and we're not done yet. So is there enough help yet? Yes, uh, we, we just had that conversation about uh, the need to do the major roads first. You need to be able to ensure that any emergency vehicles or ambulances can get to individuals. That is our biggest concern right now. And then helping with the secondary neighborhoods. And so. We are talking about more mutual aid assistance from around the state, but we have major state resources that are stepping in to supplement the city, for example. In the past, and this was frustrating to me, when a state snowplow would lift its blade literally when it came in the city streets because it wasn't their jurisdiction, I said our state plows are going to help everybody at all times, and we've literally taken over some of the routes that the city would normally do. So that is the kind of assistance we're providing now, but we are assessing now where else we can get more help uh, to get the snow off the roads, and that, that means people from other parts of the state, yes. How about secondary assistance? We're talking about plows and heavy equipment, but in the past we've seen state police uh, jump in with snow, uh, snowmobiles and those, that sort of thing, helping out with EMS, getting to people who need immediate care and immediate assistance. Oh, exactly. They're here already. 
we sent the uh, snowmobile teams and the ATVs on Thursday uh, before the first snow fell. So they've been positioned. We are very much coordinated. I'll be on a call with all of our localities in a, in a couple of hours to find out you know, what they need. They know how to reach us. We have been immediately responsive to any requests we get from municipalities that need help. I mean, every community has their own plows and crews as well. They have their own fire departments, their emergency teams. So we want to be, you know, coordinating all this, but also saying, is there an area where there's a gap? You know, where, where, is, there a, where is there a shortfall? This is what I'm intensely focused on. So we don't leave anybody in a dangerous situation as we get through the remaining 24 hours of this event. And is there a shortfall right now? Have you seen an area that that has not been addressed or is something that is going to need to be looked at again for a future storm? It, we're still in the thick of it, so it might be a little too soon to Monday morning quarterback, but what can be done better? We'll, we'll absolutely do an analysis afterward, but right now we are responding to every single request that has come in from the county, the city, and the towns. And so... That is how we gauge, you know, what's on the ground. If you have a need that you cannot meet in your own locality, the state is here to supplement, and these are the resources we're sending. For example, you know, sending all those National Guard to the South Towns is to complement the work that's already being done by the hardworking men and women of Evans and Hamburg and Orchard Park. I mean, and also you get this fatigue setting in. You have people who've been driving plows and out there on the streets for a long time. They need reinforcements so they can get a break as well. And we are offering that kind of assistance. So, no, we are completely embedded with them uh, all throughout the day. And there's any gaps that are identified by a local government, they know to tell us and we'll be there to assist. And again, those National Guard, the 70 National Guard members that are going to the South Towns, what is their immediate priority when they get there? Is it helping stranded motorists? Is it plowing? Is it um, what what will the National Guard be doing down there? And I'll send in more National Guard if we need more National Guard. So there's not a limit to that. That is our first wave of people uh, helping clear the roads initially. But then I want to get them to the side streets and start helping individuals. But our, our first party has to be making sure that all the major roads are clear for emergency vehicles to be able to get through. Then they'll be able to help on the side streets. But I really want to make sure that people are thinking about their neighbors as well. And there is a d very deep concern for senior citizens right now. So I'm asking you know, young, healthy people to go down the street and take your shovel and see if you can knock on a door and, and see if your uh, you know, senior citizen or elderly neighbor needs any help right now. They house their food supply. This is where, you know, we'll also be undertaking, you know, activities. You know, we knock on doors. We ask people if they're okay, what do they need. We're getting to that level as well. But also, I really do want to commend the local firefighter organizations. I mean, all the, all the companies that are out there. I mean, Hamburg had 10 alone. I, I knew all of them very well. This is when they really shine. I mean, those volunteers are out there doing this, knocking on the doors, helping clear the roofs, helping people get through the situation. So uh, we're in the middle of it right now, but our response is ask for whatever you need and we'll be there for you. And very quickly, we've been talking a lot of Erie County centric, but if you look at the radar, Niagara County is getting pounded right now. How's the coordination going up there? Exactly the same. Uh, we have the strong relationship up there. We have people coming in from the, uh, the, the, the air base that are right on the ground helping out. So we're doing the same thing, offering to the localities anywhere you see gaps. We're managing the major arterials, getting the snow off. So, uh, you know, there's no area that we're not taking very seriously as this, as the snow bands continue to move because they'll leave the north towns, they'll have a chance to clean up, and then it's going to head south again for one more wallop. Right. And I'm, I'm not worried about where people are going to be at 1 o'clock tomorrow because I know everybody will be safely in their houses watching the Bills game and that'll give our chance for our crews to really get a lot of intense work, hopefully, at the end of the event. If there is yeah. one, we need to get those players to <laughs> the airport to get know, them out of town. Any update the, on the Bills getting out of One more layer of anxiety that West New Yorkers don't need right now. Are the Bills going to be able to get out of their homes, or are they stranded in Orchard Park in Hamburg or at the airport? So, so it is, it is, it's a diversion. You know, Watching how this is going to play out is uh, a diversion people to focus on. But I, I feel confident they'll be able to get out. That explains the extra National Guard coming in. Thanks very much, <laughs> Governor Kathy Holcomb, for taking some time this morning with us.
a Hamburg native herself, so yep. she's been through many of these storms herself. All right, we will be right back on Daybreak. We are continuing live on the air with